TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it. A little warning screen and things of that nature. Uh, don't forget, we do have a Patreon where we post Monday through Friday. And we also have a Twitch.com, obviously. The username's right there. That's that first one. You see it? This is Skyboy. Toronto's deadliest gang. Go get them, gang. I actually heard of them before. Oh, no. Which is the most... So, here we go. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting. Talk to me. Now we are in Toronto, which is the most popular city in Canada and the capital city of the Canadian province of Ontario. Toronto is a cultural hub and the most multicultural city in the world. The true definition of a melting pot is culturally... This is Toronto? It look like Hollywood Boulevard. Extremely vibrant and relevant. The city has influenced the world. From big Bust artists it. such as Drake and The Weeknd to iconic hood movies like Paid in Full being filmed here. Toronto is Canada's most surveilled city. Toronto is watched by more than 15,000 cameras. That's like one camera for every 400 or so metropolitan residents. And with its gun crime, it's easy to see why. Today, I'll be focusing on a Lawrence Heights neighborhood in the city, also known as Jungle. I'll be discussing the history of the gangs that have sprouted from this neighborhood, their wars, and how they have shaped culture. From 2004 to 2009, there was no major gang that represented Jungle, just different groups with their own politics going on. Jungle was far from united and was pretty much a yardy stronghold at this point. Outside the neighborhood, Jungle wasn't really feared. The Jamaicans and Somalis also had issues with each other. The animosity reached tipping point when the Malis in the area shot up a yardy house. The get back would prove to be fatal. Now in March 2008, Cream, real name Abdi Karim Ahmed Abdi Karim, was hanging out with five friends. What was his name? A cream, real name Abdi Karim Ahmed Abdi Karim, was hanging out with five friends when two males walked up to the group. One pulled a gun and opened fire from just a few meters away. Abdi Karim was killed, and five of his friends, who were Somali, were also wounded. Two suspects were later arrested in the point blank videotaped killing of Cream. However, the charges against them were later dropped. Prosecutors told the Toronto court they couldn't proceed because they had no clear cut evidence and no witnesses tying the suspects to the shooting. Abdi Karim's family and friends were outraged by the decision to drop the charge. With video evidence, there was there was no uh. They have to go to trial, said Barlin Ali, who described herself as a lifelong family friend. Because this was a case for common sense. This was a case for evidence, and the evidence has to go to court and has to go to trial. She called the decision ridiculous and shameful. There is no justice in this country, said Miss Ali. It's after this tragic event that the Somalis from jungle turned into demons. Now Nikki created FCF, which stood for Family Comes First, and the rest is history. Now I always be saying that man, it only takes one event in any neighborhood that can turn an individual or a group of individuals savage. <laughs> During this period, Jungle was cool with most other hoods in Toronto. They would trap out in Alberta with other blocks like Falstaff, Region and Driftwood. Now there was an important individual from Region known as Daga who would put the Jungle guys on. Daga moved like a general and ordered plenty of people around. He would rob people's traps give people ultimatums and you know be an all-round bully due to his toxic nature he made some enemies now on the 16th of may 2015 police were called around 3 45 a.m after at least one gunshot was heard the police discovered the body of a 35 year old dugha in fort mcmurray outside the entrance to an apartment building it's heavily rumored that his killer was none other than driftwood's top savage wasi real name kawasi peters with four staff members giving the drop on dugga now i remember i used to watch react to a lot of canadian rap and that that uh he showed a scene where was it right here i i, I remember this video the jungle didn't the forget dugga for putting them on and swore revenge for his murder but for some reason didn't go to war with his actual killers in Driftwood, but rather Falstaff. Some speculate Driftwood was just too big of a block to take on at the time. However, it didn't take long for Jungle to get back. Ten days later, 
police were called to shots fired complaint at an apartment complex on Clearwater Crescent in Fort McMurray. The 22-year-old four-staff member known as Marky Bands was found inside the building suffering from what appeared to be a gunshot wound. He was taken to hospital in Fort McMurray where he sadly died. This was the first body to drop in what became the war between two blocks that were once cool. Now just a week after Marky Ban's death, jungle members got into trouble with the police. Police stormed their downtown apartment at Building 11 on Clearwater Crescent. This is why you hear rapper Top 5 from Jungle mention Clearwater Gang in his music. Police seized a large amount of coke. Yeah, Top 5. <coughs> That's the one. That's the one, that's, that dude, that dude, wow. Kane, along with guns and cash. Lee Ban Muhammad 23, Yasin Ali 20, Muhammad Omar 30, and Syed Muhyiddin 25, along with Ahmed Ahmed 24, were all facing charges. Syed Muhyiddin was known as Flipper in the streets, and he would become a key player in this story. Nikki, the creator of FCF, would die in a car crash. This would be a great loss to Jungle, and they would honor him. Top 5, also known as Shirt of Shorty, would release the track Shirt Off on any block. FCF weren't done with the drillings on Falstaff, who also went by 234. Now, on the 1st of April 2016, Kanye, real name Ahmed Khalif Mahmoud, was outside Boomtown Casino in Fort McMurray when he was shot. He was rushed to Edmonton Hospital, where he later died. Now, in Jungle, there was a man who went by Foolish, real name Saeed Ali. He was a bright light in his community who made everyone smile with his sense of humor. Somewhat. You know what's crazy? Like, Americans don't take Canada for granted. You know what I'm saying? Like, on, on like the hood type energy like maybe they used to at some point but like not not anymore not anymore i i don't ever remember them taking them lightly maybe at one point but like not in recent years is what i'm saying like 15 years back we can go 15 years back and know that canada was on timing you know of a viral star on Snapchat among the Somali community globally as well as being known in Toronto for his pranks and music skits. Foolish was loved in Jungle and had a younger brother in Top 5 who looked up to him. Now an event will occur in Jungle that will change the war as we know it, escalating it and turning it into the bloodbath that we are familiar with today. On the 30th of July 2017, Foolish was shot by a full staff member and he was later found lying on the ground with life threatening gunshot wounds in front of a shopper's drug mart near Dufferin Street in Lawrence Avenue West just before midnight. 21 year old Foolish unfortunately later died in hospital. The news completely broke his hood. Top 5 and his brother especially took it hard. Top 5 himself went from a bubbly kid who would film dance videos and stand outside waiting for his favourite celebrities like most kids were doing around his age into a heartless savage. Now Jason was the younger brother of the first body to drop in jungle. That's that one event for top 5. One event that make him go jump off the porch. That flick that switch in his mind. Like nah. <laughs> in cream he was empathetic to top five as he knew what it felt like to lose a blood brother himself jason would later form a new gang in jungle known as ggg which stood for go get em gang the name pretty self-explanatory and oh boy did the go get em gang live up to their name now the original members of go get em gang are just foolish friends that came together most go get em gang members are not from jungle but other hoods in toronto and edmonton Examples being Flipper, Larry, Sentry, 100, etc. Flipper is originally from PO and can be seen in this Mr. Comfortable music video. Now, those who are actually from Jungle are Jason, Top 5, Money Boy, etc. Go Get Em Gang is mainly made up of Somalis. However, there are other ethnicities such as Jamaicans and white Canadians. Initially, GGG didn't know who killed Fooley. Well, the Somalis, they love the cold. They, where they at? They in Minnesota, Canada, UK, everywhere cold, they are there. And suspected a gang known as Shots Up Mafia, who they had prior issues with. They were itching for revenge and it didn't take long. Literally two days after Foolish's death, on the 1st of August 2017, Shots Up member Scars, real name Adrian Milligan, who was arguing with two men near a gas station before he was shot in the chest. Toronto paramedics responded to the shooting around 1 a.m. and rushed him to hospital where he was later pronounced dead. Now you remember That's that's why I see me like being from Chicago, I'm not arguing with nobody. 
I'm not going back and forth with nobody. And especially not at a spot like a gas station. Because the gas station is... Your gas station is too turned up. We're not doing it. Remember how Kanye was killed by Go Get Em Gang, right? His rumored killer was none other than Livingston from Jungle. Now Kanye from the staff was close friends with a man known as Frankie from Edmonton. Frankie took his death personally. Now on the 26th of August 2017, around 5am, Livingston, real name Shardi Abdi Hassan, was found slumped inside a taxi cab outside an Edmonton strip mall. Livingston was pronounced dead at the scene and homicide detectives were called in. He died of gunshot wounds. Till this day it's rumoured that his killer was none other than Frankie who repped the Source Gang. Go Get Em Gang lost Livingston and Flipper was angry, so angry in fact that he plotted on a Source Gang member that was in jail. Yes, you heard that correctly. Flipper gained intel of a Source Gang member known as Benji's release date. Now on the 25th of November 2017, Benji, real name Ahmed Farah, was released from Edmonton Remand Centre at 12.50am. Less than two hours later, at 2.40am, the 25-year-old was found dead by St. Albert RCMP officer on the side of Range Road 251 in rural Sturgeon County, which is less than two kilometers from the Ramad Center. Flipper later references this event in his song titled Drill Six. So if you see a better kill shit, I don't wanna hear that shit if you ain't kill him. Because for Libby, we let hell go. We left that nigga in his jail clothes. And like every street gang, finances are important. You can't go to war with- I ain't gonna lie, that's first and foremost, that's negative. Second of all, second, second of all, getting out of jail and passing away in the same, <laughs> I'm not laughing. I'm just saying it's wild getting out of jail and then passing away in the same day, the same week, even the same month is, the same day is really where it's at. And I've, that's, that's, People have gotten out of 26 in California and walked down the block and got, you know what I'm saying? So it, it, Without it's, money. It's, and it's one common. of the most common ways gangsters make their bread is by selling drugs. The Go Get Em gang look to expand their network outside of Toronto. Alberta, a province in Canada known for being a hotspot for drugs, they set up shop. However, this naturally caused tension between the local gangs who lived there as it was their territory. Now on the 19th of August 2018, Go Get Em gang members drove to an Edmonton parking lot where they spotted Sluggy sitting in his car. Sluggy rep Source Gang in Edmonton. The two shooters pulled up while the driver waited in a car. Both the shooters emptied their clips into Sluggy, went back to their car, reloaded only to run back to Sluggy's body and empty another kill. Talk about overkill. This was even captured on CCTV. Police later arrived to find Sluggy, real name Abdi Latif Hersey, dead inside the black BMW car. They hated this man. Car riddled with bullet holes. Now it didn't take Edmonton police long to find suspects with the evidence they had available. Both 100 and Sentry were named as two of the four charged with first degree murder. 100 real name Muhammad Muhammad and Sentry real name Samatar Muhuddin. Sentry was the younger brother of Flipper. After the murder, 100 and Sentry went to downtown Edmonton where they slept in an Airbnb for the night, only to travel to Fort McMurray the next day. Eventually, they will be found by the police with the help of advanced facial recognition technology. Sentry's apartment was also raided by the police where they discovered two handguns and a brick of cocaine. 100 was later released on bail. What's the, what's the gun laws in, the, in, um, in Canada? Gotta be similar to something like the, the America, right? Certain states in America, right? Not all of them, but... In 2020, while Century remained behind bars, however, Century will later beat the case. You beat a body? Real rock, real rock. Wait, Century, you ain't beat nobody. You beat a body? First degree. No way! Act gassing it. Academics gassing it. Look at this. Yo, seven, you be the body? First degree. No way. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. That's like getting a, a, a championship ring, though. I ain't. <coughs> hey. Now, 724 is a gang based in Neptune Drive. A member of theirs known as YB, real name Johannes Brahanu, would rob a GGG member. 
Within 24 hours, he would face repercussions. On the 14th of November 2018, police responded to a shooting in the area of 36 Ann Arbor Road. YB was discovered inside the vehicle, suffering from gunshot wounds. He was transported to hospital where he died shortly after arrival. Now the creator of Shots Up Mafia was also a rapper known as Murder, real name Jerome Bell. He would do hundreds of thousands of views and in some cases a million. He was seen in the music video of one of the Chicago drill pioneers known as King Louie in the song titled Made Drill. On the 19th of March 2019, Murder was walking with a friend and his dog on Bloom Street in the jungle. Facts, facts function when GGG member Flipper with his face concealed by his white hoodie came up to him and fired several shots at close range. He then took off in a white Mercedes parked nearby. His getaway driver, a female, was waiting for him and drove him to Jane and Finch. Now Clutch, real name Hanad Abdullahi, was a 16 year old boy from Falstaff. On the 1st of August 2019, police were called to the scene shortly after 1am for reports of shots fired at the high-rise apartment building at 34 Staff Ave near Jane Street. Officers found the male victim in a stairwell. He was pronounced dead at the scene. A police officer told CBC Toronto a number of bullet casings were scattered around the area of the shooting. Investigators say three male suspects were seen fleeing the area. They are believed to be driving a dark colored. They came the real block tower? went up to the apartment and did it honda vehicle now although clutch was a 16 year old who personally never touched a ggg member he was sadly gassed up by the older members from his block which eventually led to his demise now you remember how top five's fallen brother foolish was killed outside a drugstore well clutch mocked his death by wearing a shopping bag from the same store over his head while throwing up the f gang sign for full staff now he didn't deserve to die for this, but I'm pretty sure you can see why things transpired the way they did. Now Honcho Hoodlum was a rapper. I'm not gonna lie, if you're not even about that life, and if you ain't, if and if, especially if you ain't got nothing to do with nothing, you shouldn't be moving like that at all. This is too much if you ain't had nothing to do with nothing. From Melvin, who ripped the Ten Down Gang, his cousin was the late Jerome Bell, aka Murder. Now Hoodlum will get into back and forth with Go Get Em Gang rapper Top 5. On Instagram Live, Honcho Hoodlum would make fun of Foolish and for this he would pay. On the 4th of October 2019, fellow 10 Down rapper SP, real name Deshane Taylor, <coughs> would be shot and killed outside Newmarket. SP and a female passenger were shot by two unidentified men around 9pm as they sat in a vehicle parked in the driveway of a suspected Airbnb short term rental unit on Coulter Street. The 23 year old woman was sent to hospital suffering from non life threatening injuries. It's heavily rumoured in the streets she that this was it. the work of Flipper and the Go Get Em Gang. SP was also the cousin of Huncho Hoodlum. This would be the second time he lost family to the streets and possibly to the same shooter. Now, on the 4th of November 2019, Flipper played the role of getaway driver as he drove Driftwood gang member YS to a parking lot near Sherway Gardens Mall by the corner of North Queen Street and the Queensway. Their target would be Antonio Fiorida, who often went by the name Tony Scratch, who was a mob enforcer and a part of the Camiso crime family. YS hopped out of the pickup truck Flipper was driving and ran towards Antonio Fiorida, who was meeting someone. YS fired 12 shots, 9 hitting him before getting back in the truck and leaving. If you are confused at the motive of the murder, then know it was a contract killing. Now H was a Go Get Em Gang affiliate. He was very close to Top 5 and Flipper. On the 15th of March 2020, H was in Fort McMurray when he was shot along with two others. At 6.30am, Wood Buffalo RCMP responded to reports of shots fired in an apartment complex H was in. Police said three men were injured two with non-life-threatening injuries and one with serious life-threatening injuries. All three were taken to hospital. H, real name Hanad Mohammed, sadly later died from his injuries in hospital. Police later released photos of a shooting suspect on March 25, 2020. Rumours in the streets were that this was another case of Frankie and the Source Gang ongoing conflict with the Go Get Em Gang. Now on the 13th of March 2020, Flipper, real name Syed Muhuddin, was charged with first degree murder of murder, real name Jerome Bell, accusing him of being the shooter that took his life. Now on the 19th of May 2020, with Flipper spending three months behind bars, he was hit with another case, 
charged with the first degree murder of Antonio Fiorda. Flipper was now fighting two first degree murder charges oh, at the same time. Frankie was a huge thorn in the neck of Go Get Em Gang and it didn't take long before they turned their attention to him. On Wasn't top five on the run at one point? <laughs> the 8th of December 2020, at 3pm, Edmonton police officers responded to a weapons complaint near 109th Street and 109th Avenue. When they arrived, they found Frankie, real name Mahad Bashir Farah, lying injured in the street. Paramedics responded, but he was pronounced deceased. In two surveillance footage videos released by Edmonton police, two people are seen running from the area after the homicide of Mohammed Bashir Farah around 3 p.m. One person was wearing a distinctive yellow and orange safety vest, orange headwear and a dark colored shirt, dark pants and dark footwear. The second individual was wearing a dark jacket, gray pants with dark so what is it, straight from work or they just played it like that? Dark stripes like, down the leg and dark footwear. The Go Get Em gang were quick to claim the hit and mock it online. The actual footage of Frankie dying as he struggled to get up from his gunshot wounds is one of the most haunting things I've seen. Rapper Top 5, heartless as ever, had no problem sharing the footage to his Instagram story while mocking the whole ordeal. Now Go Get Em Gang member Peaks even dropped a song with Sentry where he said this about Frankie. You should have shot Frankie, he was leaking on that flow. You should have shot his GG, it was busting through them doors. On the 14th of January 2021, Top 5 drops a song titled Two Cases, which is just him bragging about Flipper being locked for two murders and how much he likes smoking on his dead ops, Sluggy and Clutch. Back to Edmonton, the war between Go Get Em Gang and Source Gang continued. Frankie was a loved member who put in work and caused Go Get Em Gang a lot of grief so no doubt they were looking to avenge his murder. Now on the 29th of August 2021, Go Get Em Gang member Lenny, real name Hamza Muhammad, was at Duggan Community Hall in Edmonton. A few Source Gang members entered, two being known as Abdullahi Yalahaw and Christopher Wilson. Lenny was shot and instantly fell to the ground. Unable to stand, Abdullahi started to shoot at Lenny. Despite being unable to stand and taking shots from Abdullahi, Lenny had enough heart to use his gun and shoot back. The pair then exchanged a number of shots, wounding each other. As the exchange of gunfire was going on, Christopher Wilson punched Lenny in the head, which made him drop his gun. Christopher Wilson then picked it up and used it to shoot Lenny four times. One of the bullets entered Lenny's skull and instantly killed him. Abdullahi Yalahal and Christopher Wilson were both found guilty of second degree murder. Abdullahi, 35, would be ineligible for parole for 17 years, while Wilson, 39, would be ineligible for parole for 20 years. Now go- 35 and 39? This is a life. This is y'all life. Ain't nothing else to do. Golly, y'all. That's that. Brother, retire. You supposed to be an OG in this. You can't be outside like that. It's over with. 30. You pushing 40 out there doing hits? Go Get Em Gang was sickened and hurting about the loss of Lenny. 100 especially took it personally. You already know what they were planning as a response. Now on the 12th of March 2022, Go Get Em Gang members 100 and Hindi along with another would go to Edmonton. They would fire over 70 shots at a crowd of people at 118 Avenue near 125th Street in Edmonton. It was basically a mass shooting. Police discovered seven people with gunshot wounds at the scene, one of whom died later. Inbert George, 28, was identified as the victim dead. Saddest thing is, everyone hit was a civilian. It seems 100 and friends were so emotional over the loss of Lenny that they didn't plan their get back correctly and rushed it. After the shooting, Go Get Em Gang sped away in their car. Unfortunately for them, an EPS helicopter tracked the car that sped away from the scene, leading to a chase. After at least one failed attempt at making the car stop, police eventually stopped the car and the people inside allegedly tried to run away. Two men, 23-year-old Syed Ibrahim and 22-year-old 100, real name Mahmoud Mahmoud, were arrested and have been charged with first-degree murder and multiple firearm offences. Hindi managed to get away, so police have additionally issued a Canada-wide warrant for Hindi, real name Saeed Osman, 27, who's also now wanted on first-degree murder charge. They got him up on a billboard. This a 50,000 bounty was issued for any information that led to his arrest. On the 30th of January, 2000. 
2021, four star rapper Nine would this foolish on Instagram. Bear in mind, Nine is the rumored killer of foolish. So if true, this would ruffle a lot of feathers in jungle. And it certainly did. Literally the next day on the 31st of January, at just before 9 a.m., shooting occurred in the staff. Video surveillance shows a gunman rush from the front passenger seat of a black Honda Civic towards the entrance of a North York parking lot. The shooter spotted a man known as Hashim Omar Hashi in his vehicle and ran up to Mr. Hashi's passenger side vehicle and fired multiple gunshots before running back into his getaway vehicle. Now Hashim Omar Hashi had no ties to any gangs, completely innocent and was a student studying accounting while he worked part time at the airport. He had the prom wrong fate, but wrong place, wrong time, and man, that's a, that's a sad, sad realization of it, man. There's gonna be innocent victims out here. Who are not involved but i always tell you man if you're not involved and you hang around gang members you are involved at least to the ops you are they don't care promising future and was a very well respected young man his death was caused by an emotional shooter reacting to what nine said the All other right, day Peter. now All a fortnight right, after 100%. the murder both money man ggg and top five were arrested for the killing Top 5 was charged with accessory after the fact to murder and some drug related offences. Police believe Top 5 wasn't the shooter but merely one of the passengers waiting in the car. After one month behind bars, Top 5 was released on a 70k bond with strict regulations such as wearing a GPS ankle monitor and a social media ban. Now after 2 months, Top 5 got intel, possibly from his lawyer, that his charges were going to be upgraded to first degree murder. He instantly cut off his ankle monitor and went on the run. At first, the police thought he was hiding out in the- See, that's what I thought so. I thought he was on the run. This is when I first found out about him when he was on this run. The country, but Top 5 managed to cross the border and find himself in Los Angeles, where he partied hard, made connections with several celebrities, and even bagged a girlfriend in Cuban though. He even dropped a music video titled Movie that went viral. As for Money Man GGG, well, he would be released a year later. Now, on the 7th of October 2021, Top 5 was arrested in Los Angeles. He spent a few months in jail there before he was extradited back to Canada. Now, the Go Get Em gang were linked with a gang known as HOC from Western Road. He was locked up in Los Angeles County Jail? I wonder how that went for him. Curious, but at that point, he knew a lot of people, so he probably, you know, it was probably light work which also had beef with Shots Up Mafia. They were a part of the Shots Down Alliance. Now you may be wondering, what does HOC stand for? It stands for Habards on Koch. Habard being the Somali word for gun. Now on the 17th of June 2022, around 10.40, police responded to a shooting in the area of Scarlet Road and Scarlet Wood Court, south of Lawrence Avenue, which was Shots Up Mafia territory. When officers arrived, they found the Shots Up member, NS, real name Brian Bernard suffering from gunshot wounds and there were also several shell casings found nearby. This video was taken of NS lying on the floor as his head was leaking. Despite life-saving measures, NS was pronounced dead. Rumours that both HOC and Go Get em Gang were involved in his- I ain't gonna lie, Toronto. I knew already, but y'all out there going, y'all giving it up. This is wild. Murder. Century Go Get em Gang even mocks NS on a track. Now on the 25th of June 2022, Shots Up members slid and fired shots on Simcoe Street North around 12.45am. A total of 5 victims were struck, 2 young men, G30, real name Jaheem Spence, 21, and Jojo, real name Joshua Conwell Wonk, 22, of Oshawa. Both died, 3 other men sustained injuries. G30 was from Jungle and was on Instagram Live with Top 5 many times. His murder was believed to be a get back for the murder of NS. Shots Up Mafia rapper Big Serp went to dissing G30 on Instagram. Now in December 2022, Flipper would go on trial for the murder of Antonio Fiorda. Antonio Fiorda was a main man. In 1996, he was charged after the police found an AK-47, a pipe bomb and other explosives in his North York home. He served his time for these charges. Now, Fyoda was told by higher ups to become an enforcer for a man known as Joseph Katropa, who was a rival of Nick Nero, who was heavily connected with the Sinaloa. It's that deep in Toronto? Cartel, Sinaloa cartel, mafias. Cartel. On the day of Antonio Fyoda's murder, the man he was meeting 
at Via Allegro Restaurante was none other than Joseph Catropa, who fled after he witnessed YS shoot Antonio several times. However, what YS and Flipper didn't know was that undercover police were present and watching the restaurant as part of an unrelated investigation. They couldn't believe their eyes when they witnessed a murder happen in front of them. Now one of the officers followed Flipper and YS's pickup truck onto Highway 427, getting a good look at the driver and license plate before he lost them. Now with the help of surveillance videos, police were able to re-follow the route Flipper and YS took, which led them to a condo where they arrested Flipper a few days later. With heaps of evidence already mounting up, oh, there's that many cameras where they can backtrack and do all that. 15,000 cameras and they still doing this much hits out there? It didn't help their case that police were able to find self-incriminating messages on their phones. A message exchange of the murder where someone said they paid a 60 along with a picture of YS and Flipper holding 60,000 pounds. The Crown stated this was money they were paid to carry out the contract killing. Now YS was murdered a few months after this hit so only Flipper was standing trial. Now despite Flipper's defence that the evidence wasn't conclusive to point him as the driver, the prosecutors argued that his height, braiding style, walking type, etc. matched the description of the driver. Flipper was found guilty of first degree murder. Six months later, the trial for his other murder case started. Now remember how he had the female getaway driver for the murder of Jerome Bell aka murder? Well she turned into star witness and took the stand oh, despite facing man. digital intimidation over snitching. She testified that on the 19th of March 2019, Muhuddin jumped out of her car and shot Jerome Bell, 22, steps away from his home. In now was she an accomplice that knew beforehand or was she just chilling with somebody and this so happened to happen in her presence? housing complex. Prosecutors described her as an honest, candid and forthcoming witness and urged jurors to accept that she was telling the truth. The defence countered by claiming her testimony was filled with lies and contradictions and she was motivated to implicate Muhuddin not because she wanted to do the right thing as she suggested but by offering up Muhuddin she got bail and her murder charge dropped. Now despite the online harassment including an image of a rat superimposed on her head, the witness who's in her mid 30s stayed mostly composed, strong and even feisty. When pressed on her delayed cooperation during cross-examination, she hit back with, your client's a killer sir. Flipper, real name Saeed Muhuddin was found guilty for the murder of Jerome Bell and received another automatic life sentence to run a double M and a double life sentence. One co-currently with the one he's already serving. As the son would put it, two for the price of one. Now a gang known as Dicks and Bloods and Go Get Em Gang had issues, mostly due to Flipper and a PO member known as Panda when they killed the Dixon OG back in 2013 called Rondo. Now on the 11th of April 2024, Jason was standing near Queen Street when two males approached him, drew handguns and shot him multiple times before fleeing the scene <coughs> of foot. Jason, real name Ibrahim Abdekarim, was transported to hospital where he was pronounced dead. This was a huge blow to Go Get Em Gang as he was a loved member and creator of the gang and was even more heartbreaking for his mother as this was the second son she had lost to gun violence. Now it didn't take long for Go Get Em Gang to respond. On the 14th of April 2024, Toronto police responded to reports of a sh Like three months ago, huh? Shooting near Lawrence Avenue West and Ralph Street around 4.50 p.m. Police found one man who had been shot and was pronounced dead at the scene. That man was Mahmoud Abdi Diwale, also known as Yodi, who was a Dixon blood. And as I was making this video, on the 28th of July 2024, Go Get Gang member 2 Millie was charged for his murder. Now DJ Drama is from Germantown, Philadelphia. He founded the Atlantic Records imprint. One of their first signees was Lil Uzi Furt, who then helped give features to Toronto rapper Presser, putting the city on. DJ Drama was in Toronto when he was beaten up at a club and robbed for his jewellery by Go Get Em Gang members. After Go Get Em Gang received a payment and with the help of Presser, DJ Drama was returned his jewellery, a lesson to any Americans thinking Canada is sweet. Now top 5 will stand trial near the end of this year. Him being guilty would likely be the final nail in the Go Get Em Gang coffin. Now this brings me to the end of this video. As always, I send my condolences to the family. Yeah, 
family of everyone I mentioned, you can find them. uncensored version of this video on my patreon now please like comment and subscribe see you next time for more toronto content